Uh, let's start another talk uh, after a coffee break, and the stage is yours. Oh, okay, and uh, okay, can you hear me? Okay, and uh, thank you for coming to this se session because uh, in a in a world full of mobile phones and cloud services, uh, actually few people are interested in this type of environments. So really, thank you for coming and. <laughs> my name is Hong Ren Yu, and people used to call me PC Man because that's my nickname. And now we are going to talk about uh, old-fashioned desktop environments um, that are still useful. <laughs> yeah, okay. And self-introduction, who am I? Uh, I'm the creator of the LSD desktop environment, um, and also I'm the one of the main developers of the, the new LSD, LSQt desktop environment project. And I, I'm, I'm a Linux user, especially Debian Linux, since uh, 2004. And about, uh, and now I'm working uh, for an AI start startup company uh, named Appier, uh, uh in Taiwan. So, but and previously I, I was a physician working in the hospital for six years. But I love software, so then I I changed my I did a switch for my career, and now I'm here. So, yeah. Okay, so what's, what's LSD? Some of you might have uh, heard of this desktop environment, um, but some of you may, may, may not be uh, so familiar with it. Um, LSD uh, stands for Lightweight X11 Desktop Environment, and it used to be the default desktop environment shipped with Raspberry Pi, but now they use their own desktop. But their, their, their own desktop is, is actually a derivative of LSD, so we can say they still use our our, uh, our desktop, and also it's the default desktop environment of the Lubuntu uh, distribution, and the project was born in 2006, and actually is is uh, the project is born here in Taiwan, and but few people know that yet. But and the this design philosophy and of this project, why why we why we start such a project in 2006, uh, because there are already many desktop environment, but why yet another desktop environment because uh, we have some uh, different design philosophy. For example, uh, we want the system to have low memory footprint, and it, it has minimal listed design, and also it's GTK plus based. And but the most different thing is uh, the whole desktop environment is loosely coupled, and there are loose coupling between the the different components, and it's modular. That means most of the component in the desktop environment can be used outside the desktop environment. So that's, that's a big difference with others. But some people may argue that you, you just put a bunch of independent program together and call your desktop environment. If, it's, uh, if they are not so integrated, why it's called a desktop environment? But, uh, but we want to uh, challenge this kind of view. But actually, actually uh, it, 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 it turned out that uh, the project went pretty well previously. And, and this also uh, showed that uh, Conway's law is somewhat correct. And the, the software, uh, just uh, the, the organization of the software system will be, uh, uh, will be reflected by the, the organization, uh, structure of the organization that developed the software. Yeah. So we, we are a bunch of um, loosely coupled volunteers without a central, centralized organization or, or any company behind us. Yeah. So it looked like this, streamlined, old-fashioned. But I, I prefer the term classic. It's not old, it's just classic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so simple um, and fast. And yeah, just like Unix. OK, but uh, during the years, uh, it has been there for, um, for 12 years. And we've, we currently face many challenges. For example, uh, in a world full of mobile devices, actually uh, desktop now uh, desktop and laptops now <laughs> has uh, less than half market share. And, and also, you, as you know, most of them are actually running Windows. And, 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 and in the small fraction that runs Linux, only a very, very small fraction uh, are using our desktop environment. So, and also, um, th the impact is not as huge as before. And also, we suffer from fragmentation of the technical stack. For example, KD and GNOME are two very different, very different camps. And also, uh, some are more mobile friendly, and some are more desktop-centric. 
And also we have X11, VLAN, GTK2, GTK3, and GTK4 is, is going to be released, I think it's going to be released in the near future. And we have Qt4, 5, QWidget, and QML, a lot of different toolkits to support, and also we have a lot of different Linux distribution and DSP, BSD flavors. So you have to make sure you, your code uh, work for all these kind of combination. It, it, it's getting more and more difficult. And, and also, given the technical difficulty and the technical fragmentations and the small market share, it's actually more and more difficult to get new developers to build up a new community. And also, uh, more slow become a problem for us because lightweight is, being lightweight is not as important as before because more, more slow solve the problem. It's not, not us to uh, solve the problem, it's more, sl more slow. So, so actually, um, y you can claim that my desktop environment only need uh, one, 100 megabyte of RAM, but that doesn't matter because your browser need two, two gigabytes. So, so this, this is, uh, uh, this used to be the, the problem we, are, we were solving in the past, but it cannot be uh, the only focus for, for our project right now. Yeah. It is still very important for embedded systems like uh, yeah. MIPS or, yes. or uh, Raspberry Pi for those kind of stuff, so yes. it, is, it is still values. <laughs> Thank you for mentioning this. That's why we are still alive. <laughs> yes, but another unfortunate trend is uh, if you type this into the Google search trend, you will find that uh, GTK Plus vs Qt. Uh, actually, GTK Plus is uh, mo less people are interested in GTK Plus nowadays, and the overall trend uh, is just declining. So it, it's really not so easy to find new de developer for this kind of desktop project nowadays. So we, we really need some changes. Then we tried to <coughs> address this issue in 2013. Uh, we, we tried to pour some core component to Qt, try to see how it works. You, you, as you might know, uh, LSD was a GTK plus based desktop environment, but we tried to pour some of the core uh, components like the desktop manager, file manager to Qt uh, with, the, uh, with the source code rewritten in C++ and of course uh, KDE developed, some of the KDE developed helpers during the pro process, especially Will Stephenson. And we want to thank KDE developer for their help. So the, the initial experiment showed that actually uh, porting the application to Qt from, G from the GTK source code is possible. It's not easy, but it's possible. And later, we found that there, there was a, another Qt-based desktop environment that shared the same uh, design principle with us. It's named uh, Razor Qt. So we started to talk uh, to see if we can collaborate more. And later, we, we found that the, the fact is simple. Uh, we have a desktop. We want to change the Qt, but we don't have enough of engineering resource. And they have a Qt code base, but but they, they, they lost the momentum to continue the development. So then a historic event happened. And we, after some, some more collaboration, we decided to just merge two projects into one. So we, we formed a new project named LSQT. And this, why I say it's historic, because this is rarely seen in the free, soft, free software community. Every day you see new forks, but you, 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 you can hardly see successful merges. There were merges, but most of them failed. Yeah, but, <clears throat> but our merge uh, went, went out uh, very, pretty well. So, so actually, we, we proved that it's, it's possible for two, uh, two projects with totally different tech stack merged together. Yeah. So now, in the jungle of desktop environment, we have a unique position. Yeah, because uh, we come from the GTK Plus world, and they came from the Qt camp. And there are also a lot of different desktop environments, but now we, we are sitting uh, in the center of this desktop environment jungle and try to make everyone happy. But of course, that's very difficult. But, but we, we will try our best to make sure that uh, we, we, can, uh, we, we can still stay with our original goals, but 
become more flexible. Yeah. Okay, so uh, now, uh, of course, we don't have LSQ-conf like this, but uh, uh, when, when, when I visit Paris, uh, I, 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 I try to uh, find uh, our team member there. So we had, we had a dinner together. Yeah, you can call that LSD-conf. <laughs> <coughs> Okay, so what about the new LSQ desktop environment? And it's still, it still has the classic UI. I mean, when I say classic, it, 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 uh, it means Windows, more Windows-like. <laughs> yeah, uh, the, the UI that normal people will want to use. Yeah, and yeah, and, but it become cute based and we still stay with the same design printable as the original LSD and still being lightweight and quick response of the UI. That's very important. That's the core value of this project. It should be very fast even on slower machine without uh, such powerful hardware. But of course, it's not only for uh, the ancient hardware. So, so I keep mentioning classic. Yeah, it's, it's for classic desktop environment. It's not for all hardware that will be retired soon. Yeah, so that's the whole point of this project. And still, we want to make every component modular so they can be used outside LSQ. So even if you don't like the desktop environment, you can still use the, some of the component freely uh, without problems, uh, such as the file manager uh, and archiver, image viewer, some, something like that. And we implement a Qt platform plugin that made the Qt program work better with Linux desktop. And that plugin can actually be used outside LSQ. So, so other Qt program can, can also use that. And that's our, uh, one of our core value. So, and also we don't force you to use any window manager. You can choose whatever you want. And we actually encourage users to do this. But if you ask me, uh, my personal recommendation will be Openbox. But uh, you, you can use Kwin, whatever you want. Most of them will work. Yeah. So now it look like this. Yeah, uh, pretty similar to to LSD, or you can say pretty similar to Windows. <laughs> yep. But uh, there's one thing that make our project pretty unique because you really seen uh, you you can you can really see a project that use so so many different technology from totally different camps. They are because. Uh, uh, as many people know, uh, that the test deck in Linux desktop is quite pretty, uh, uh, pre uh, pretty much in a mess. And if you are supporting KDE and you are supporting GNOME, you might end up using totally different development tools, library. The whole stack will be different. But we we try to blend them together well and 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 work without problem. So uh, the main graphical user interface is implemented using Qt. Five, and for some core system services, we are using KDE Taiwan libraries like K Window System uh, to to interact with the Window Manager, and we use K Screen to better uh, handle your screen uh, screen resolution adjustment, something like that, because it's really hard to do uh, with raw uh, XCB or uh, or if you want to support WLAN, you will become uh, very difficult. So we try to reuse other people's work. And we, 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 in some, some places, we use KD Solid Framework for the hardware discovery. Okay, so, and about the file system abstraction, uh, the virtual file system, uh, how, how uh, to, to enable application um, um, from uh, using, re, re accessing a remote file system, we try to use GNOME file system. So we use GIO, GNOME GIO, GLib GIO, and GVFS. Because they, uh, it's, it's kind of unfortunate that this project has the prefix K or G, but actually they are desktop independent libraries. But people, when people say G, they will say, no, you are using GNOME libraries. And no, you are pulling the KD stack in your desktop. But no, they are just normal libraries, simple and independent. Yeah, so we mix them together. And uh, for the window manager part, instead of developing our own we know manager. We 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 actually uh, we actually encourage our user to just use their their own favorite because there are already too many window managers. <coughs> yeah, 
and but uh, the default uh, we will recommend is uh, OpenBox or KWin. They they work uh, the best, but you can choose whatever you want. And we have a config option for you to change the window manager easily. Yeah. Okay, and we have a core library named QDXDG. It's a free desktop spec implementation uh, done by our project. And this, this library is actually used by some of other similar projects. So we use others' work, and our, our work is used by others. And this sh should, and this, uh, I think this is what free software should, like, should be like. And it's not, not like uh, you are GNOME, you know, I am KDE, but you, you do yours, I, I, do, I do my, uh, we do ours, but, but things should, be, should not be like that. So we try to mix uh, the good parts from different camps. And actually, we, we reuse some code from uh, different projects. Of course, uh, <coughs> uh, the file manager is ported from the GTK version of PC, uh, PC Mem FM Qt. It's a file manager. Of course, FM means file manager, and PC Mem is here. So uh, it's actually pretty good to start your own project because you can name the software after your name, just like Debian, Linux. Yeah, so it's PC Mem FM. <laughs> and, oh, it's ported from the GTK version. And also, we recently we have our own file archiver to handle compressed file. And you may, may be surprised that it's, it's, it's implemented using Qt, but actually it's ported from GNOME File Roller, a, a totally different GTK program, but we show that it's possible. You, you, can, you, you can actually reuse the source code, uh, the, the, co the code, the library, everything from different projects. They are not so different. Only the UI and the user experience should be different, but the underlying technology should be shared. That's our core value. And also we provide uh, the configuration tool for OpenBox and even the pulse audio mixer. It's, it's also ported from its original GTK version. Yeah, and also we reuse some code from KDE as well. The terminal emulator actually used some code from KDE console and the config uh, our config tool used some uh, UI classes developed by KDE. Yeah. And they, we mix them together and they work pretty well without problems. Uh, actually, there were some problems. <laughs> some, uh, there are still some caveats that need to be uh, handled with care. Uh, for example, uh, you, can, <coughs> you can integrate with glib, manloop inside Qt programs and that is officially supported by Qt. But it's buggy, and and but most of the time it works pretty well. But if you are trying to uh, e emitting cute signals within the uh, G object signal handlers, that that will not work, and it's a known known bug for quite a long time without any fixes. So and if you you are doing multi-thread programming and do asynchronous I/O with both libraries, and they they have a slightly different. Uh, threading models. So if you do, a, you are doing multi-thread asynchronous I/O, which is the case of file manager, you will be in trouble. So this need to be handled with care. Yeah, otherwise you you will have some weird bugs. And also uh, in in Qt there is an environment variable and then Qt no glib. You know what it means. You can turn off glib integration. And if your program depends on glib and the user specify this environment variable, your application will be broken in some ways. And, and we, we actually have some bug report related to this. Yeah, so, so there, are, there are still some caveats. And also, um, this, this one is very interesting. When you are mixing the C libraries and C++ library, you will find that uh, in some C libraries, they will name their variable or function uh, delete. But this is a, a, a keyword in C++, so, so they, this, this code cannot be compiled together. And, and this, this really happened. It happened in the source code of file roller. So, so when I'm trying to port that, that piece of code, it failed to compile until I see that, oh, oh the function name is delete. <laughs> and I renamed that, and it, it worked uh, beautifully. And also, uh, in, in the source code of glib and, and GIO, uh, there are some, uh, there are some function uh, named, like, like a variable named signal. But signal is a cute keyword. So if you are trying to include this, this header file in your Qt program, you, you will have problems. So you, you, you need to disable the, the 
cute macro with some compiler definition, then this will fix the problem. And, and the other problem is, uh, uh, although Qt, Qt uh, in, enable faster development for us because the library is pretty easy to use, troubleshooting be, be, become uh, more difficult. Yeah, because it supports many different platforms and the uh, source code of Qt is pretty complicated. And uh, from, from uh, uh, when migrating from Qt 5, uh, Qt 5.9, 5.11, we, we encounter some regression bugs uh, frequently. And, and, and in the, most of the time, we will receive the bug report from our users, things like DND, uh, drag and drop doesn't work, or uh, screen re resolution uh, went wrong, something like that. And we will take a look and find out it's not our bug. Then we try to read the uh, cute source code and help the upstream developer to, to, to fix them. Yeah, we, 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 we do this and co cooperate with uh, KDE developers and, and uh, the Qt developers to get this issue fixed. Okay, and another pretty big issue is it's really very, very difficult to have a cons consistent look and feel for your desktop environment because, because there are too many different UI toolkit, too many different configurations uh, you will have GTK2, GTK3, Q4, Q5, and some, uh, some pure X11 programs, and they will use uh, maybe uh, some use XFT settings, and you have to also support S cursor, a lot of things. Otherwise, they just look different. And even if you don't sup try to support all of this, GNOME programs still look different. And they're using uh, client side decoration and you, you'd have no option to turn it off. So it's pretty hard. And we, we try our best to support most of the things that, that are common, uh, like uh, uh, font setting uh, is actually uh, not that desktop independent, uh, not desktop dependent. It, sh it should be shared among different applications. So uh, in our configuration tool, we we'll try to accommodate this incompatibility and try to uh, update the setting for different toolkit properly so they can look more or less unified. It's not really possible to make them has uh, similar look and feel, but we can try our best. At, at least uh, don't make them look like aliens. Yeah, but that's not an easy task. And also uh, in Qt, things become more difficult because uh, now Qt file rely on some uh, Qt platform plugin, and each desktop need to uh, develop their own plugins to support some uh, better desktop integration. And some of the features are not provided by Qt by default. So, so we, 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 we try to cultivate our own plugin and to support a better file dialog uh, or, or better theming, things like that. Yep, but in GNOME, GTK han handles most of this, but in Qt, you have to handle this yourselves. Okay, so what about the, the final result? Uh, the UI looks mostly the similar uh, with the original LSD, but people will say, uh, no, no, don't use Qt, Qt is bloated. Why, why you use Qt? But actually, it's not that bloated. Okay, it's bloated, somewhat bloated, but it's not that bloated. You can see that uh, the, the end result, we did this experiment on Debian, and uh, uh, Debian stretch, the current stable, stable version, and after code boot, uh, okay, the experiment is done in virtual box because it's, nowadays it's really hard to find such a limited hardware. But I set it to, uh, 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 for two, two CPU cores and give it uh, 500 megabytes RAM. And the screen resolution is set to, uh, set to this. And then I do code boot and then open a terminal emulator and the default file manager provided by the desktop. Because if you don't do this, uh, it, it, you, you're only testing how much room will be, will, will, will be needed by rendering the wallpaper. <laughs> so you need to open some application, and I, I, I just open the default file manager for, for every desktop environment. But, but because Openbox window manager does not bring its own file manager, so in, in, in the experiment, I, I did not open any app in Openbox. So you can see that after code boot, if you only log in with uh, a bare bone window manager Openbox, uh, your system will, will 
you, you will, uh, the whole system will take 71 megabytes of RAM. And if you add, add on LSD, you will take 100. And for LSQ, okay, I, I admit that it takes more memory, but it, it's not that, that, that much compared to the, the current standard. You, you can see other, uh, actually the, the memory usage of the current LSQ is very similar to that of XFCE. So you can know that Qt is, is not really that bloated. Yeah. And is the whole desktop environment still used half of the, the memory usage uh, of KDE Plasma. But of course, KDE is much more feature rich. So it's, it's just trade off. Uh, it's not any one of this is superior or inferior. It's just trade off, you know, different design philosophy. Yeah. So uh, after all of the migration to Qt and adding new features, uh, porting all the code to C++, actually the resource usage is very similar, uh, at least on the same scale as the original. But, but uh, after all this, we got the same UI, uh, or no, similar UI with more memory usage, and w w what was the benefit of doing this? Yeah, I will, I will talk about what's the benefit later. But and also, uh, finally, Lubuntu is going to switching, switch from uh, uh, the GTK Plus LSD to, to the new LSD Qt uh, in the upcoming release. Yeah. So, and sorry, I skipped this previously. Oops. Yeah, actually, uh, by doing this, now we have a much more active community because as I mentioned previously, it's, it's now really hard to find someone who want to write C code with GTK plus and especially uh, 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 it's already hard to find someone interested in desktop project. It's even harder if you want to find someone is, who is interested in, in desktop, but, but the, the guy is not interested in, in in KDE or GNOME or others, and the guy is interested in our desktop environment, and then uh, the guy is willing to write C code with GTK Plus, the probability is pretty low. So it's really hard to find new developer, but with all the new changes, new toolkit, C++, and all of the uh, reusing technology from existing project, now we have a quite active community, and uh, the, the, the core development team uh, has about uh, more than 15 developers and doing the development actively. And also uh, our community become more active because of this. So I think that's the, um, and we only increase the memory usage by 50, 50 megabytes. I think that's pretty cheap. <laughs> so uh, after all of, this, uh, all of this hard work, I think it is, it's quite worthy because uh, now we have a much more healthy community and uh, de development can, can still continue. It's, it's much more active nowadays. And also our work can be, uh, can be reused by other Qt projects. Yep, so what about the future? <coughs> uh, the, the top one problem is the Wayland support because, uh, but but we, when, we, when can we have uh, good Wayland support is still a, an open question because uh, it's like chasing a moving target. Wayland is, is rapid, uh, changing rapidly and, and some of the, uh, the original uh, free desktop specs are, are not yet uh, designed for Wayland. So the, the old migration uh, will, will take some time. But because we are use, reusing the K window system library from KDE, uh, I think uh, it, will, it will make things much easier because we don't have to do all this low level stuff ourselves. And uh, we can reuse uh, what has been done by other projects. So that's one of the reasons we, we, we introduce a library from other projects and not do it our, on our own. Uh, it's pretty important to, to uh, not waste the de development resource to, to rebuild the same wheel every time. Yeah, but, uh, and also we are uh, trying to improve the user experience. Yeah, because uh, uh, it, if, if you have very low memory footprint, but the, the user interface is pretty bad, uh, it doesn't make sense. 
Otherwise, you can, uh, you can use a uh, terminal emulator. It has the lowest memory footprint. <laughs> yeah. But uh, to, 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 do, to make uh, a desktop environment, it, it should have better user experience. And this is what we, we, we did not do pretty well at the moment. And we are trying to improve that. So, so any feedback on this one is, is really appreciated because we are not driven by any company or, and we don't have a foundation, something like that. So we don't have our own designers. We're just a bunch of uh, uh, volunteers. So it's, it's, it's more difficult to get uh, uh, the, the, the same level of uh, design like uh, some commercial solutions. But actually, the, the code base itself is, is, is good. But uh, the UI just not look as polished. So we should improve this part. But, uh, but we, we want to keep this experience classic. That means uh, we are not going to uh, hide every menu, or we are not going to remove button you, you, you used to click. Yeah, we, we will keep the, the classic experience. That's the whole point of the, the project. And not, 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 not make everything look like mobile phone. Yeah, and then we will still make sure the project is still, uh, the, the desktop is still lightweight and fast. And when you click any, anything, it should respond quickly. And that's pretty important. And, and but uh, being lightweight is still important, but it's not the, the, the only focus nowadays, thanks to more slow. Yeah. But, uh, but I agree that, that uh, it's still important for embedded system. And also, I think it's a very good desktop for, uh, uh, for devices like Raspberry Pi. But, but I, I, I rarely see people using that on, on, on Pi. But, but actually, it, it works pretty well. So if you have a Raspberry Pi, give it a try, please. <laughs> yep. And, and we, we are going to do uh, more application to, and make it more polished. So that's, that's the current plan. But uh, there's one thing I need to clarify here is the original LSD is not dead. It's still being developed and actively maintained uh, thanks to our, our team member. Yeah, because the original plan was uh, a full migration to, to Qt and, and let LSQt replace the original LSD desktop. But we realized that uh, many users still prefer the original one. And some of the developers are still willing to work on the old K, uh, GTK code base. So now uh, we, we, we keep uh, two different product lines. So while we, the new, new feature are adding to LSQ, LSD is still being actively developed. Uh, just the development is not as fast as before, but it's still being developed and maintained. And now it's GTK3 ready. So, so, so if you are still using LSD, don't worry about that. You can, you can continue uh, using that. It will, not, it will not be dead pretty soon. It will be, uh, unless, uh, I think unless GTK itself is dead, uh, LSD will be there. Yeah, so, so thank you for listening, but I think we still have some time. So let's, let's uh, take a look at, uh, some maybe show you some of the applications. Yep, this is the file manager, and of course it's named. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay, okay. Maybe we can have some Q and A right now. Do we have some questions? Yeah, please. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, I have two comments, and the first is just for your reference. Uh, the first one is that uh, another successful example of project merging in free software is that is uh, School Linux and the Debian EDU. Okay, they merge together because they are doing the same thing. So, uh, because I have studied that for some time. Okay, and the second is that actually uh, lightweight desktop environment is uh, they are still the requirement is always there. And uh, what we are doing now, maybe you know that, is that to make old computers alive. And uh, for example, uh, uh, just today, there, there will be a group of uh, students that to be known to be uh, information volunteers, and the, the computers there are very old. 
32 bit, and uh, actually, currently only LXD works on on such machines. So we are still. Uh, I, I I made a, a version of the uh, customized customized arrow bundle for them. Uh, but currently, I have a pro I have a problem. Is about the uh, you s you talk about the XDG implementation, and uh, what what uh, confused me is about the XDG menu. XDG menu actually uh, for KDE for GNOME, uh, the XDG menu implementations are actually uh, they I I have to say they don't follow the spec. And the LXDE follows the specs, but I have a, qu uh, a problem is that the underline in the menu is gone. Mm -hmm. you, you know, our, our Zico project, we, we use underline to separate the tag and the application name. But in, uh, in the, uh, I tried the uh, newest uh, arrow bound to 18.4, the, the problem is still there, it's just the underline is gone. Okay, I'm I'm not sure if uh, you have re-implemented. You, you mean the uh, underline in the me menu uh, in the menu, yeah. Menu items. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, if the name contains the underline in it, it will be gone. That's probably related to the implementation of like GTP. Yes, plus because plus only LXD has this problem. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, KD, GNU, and the XFCE, they all, they all, the uh, underline are okay. Only LSD has this problem. Okay, I, I think it's not related to the XDG spec because in, in LSD, we are actually using the parser provided by GNU. Yeah, I, I so, but, but, but I have to say that GNU does not follow the spec <laughs> very, very, very well either. But I, I, know, I know that you, you, you must uh, reuse some yeah, yeah. The, the component of that, but. Uh, at, at least this is so far what I have tried, and but I haven't tried LSQ. Okay, we, we uh, can we can check that, but I will encourage you to try LSQ. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, <laughs> but, but because so far I'm I'm also waiting for the Rubon to yeah. eighteen yeah. ten. Yeah, yeah, because I if because I need to make the live ISO, you know. So if I need to remove the LSD and uh, push yeah. the LSQ again, it is. It's not so easy. So just just uh just the two comments for you. Okay. Okay, thank, thank you. Hi, um I have a comment and also open question for everybody. <coughs> so um uh, thank you, uh Peace Lens uh, years uh, effort to make this uh, lightweight uh, environment for us. But I wanna point out one thing. Um the most role is not the limitation, it's the, it's the challenge also the niche. For example, when I start to use uh, uh, the PC, I work on with uh, Stackware using, let's say, 44, 45 floppies. People, yeah. old, old guys probably remember that time. And the still in, it's how many, 20 years later, we still have this problem because you have a new <coughs> embed system, let's say, Raspberry Pi or something, let's say, Apple Watch. Still, we still have a low-end hardware. We want to have uh, some kind of a GUI on top of this. The question is now: we want to reproduce this uh, in, um, the experience on desktop into the new things. Is how can we create a new ecosystem, which I think is very important for open source. How can we bring this kind of computational environment to some people, especially young people, which cannot afford to have? Uh, a PC for their own in the past to new generation. In my case, when I was young, I'm kind of a prodigy, so I'm the few people play with the PC and the, the bit net. But not, not, nowadays, everybody can this kind of thing, but not for the young people and for the rural people. How can we bring this kind of thing to them? It's a new challenge. I don't have an answer, but I'm thinking this, I want to indicate this a way to show this kind of thing. I still have a Apple Power PC G4 which can, I cannot run anything but the Ubuntu. And <laughs> so I'm thinking, I mean, I if I can donate this computer to some young kid which don't afford, afford to buy a new computer, I like to. And this, I'm thinking there's something we as the community of open source can think about. How can we give this kind of abundant things from the old technology so, so that everybody, not just for some kind of engineer or some kind of rich guys, in the city, we can also we can all have this computing power to use this kind of work things. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. 
Yeah, we will keep trying to try our best to make sure it still works for all the hardware. I, I just mentioned that it's not the only focus to stay lightweight. You still have to care the user experience. Yeah. Um, hello, my name is Andreas Tiller. Um, I just want to make a little remark that you joined two free software projects. I really applaud this because it's so rare and you cannot mention it frequently enough. That's, that's a good move because we have so many desktop environment, but in principle, we only need one good one. Well, yeah. Thank you for this. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Catherine Sutter. I want to thank you very much for your work. I've been using LXD for many years. Oh, really? Thank you. Yeah, thank, nice to meet you. Uh, I Right now, I've been working on... Uh, hmm. I have a DD friend who is very angry at me for not making bug reports or LXD, and I promise I will try to do better <laughs> as a user. Uh, in terms of features, uh, yeah. there are some practical things that I think might make it easier to use on a very tiny screen. Yes. I have used it in a cheroot on a Nokia N900, which is a small uh, Nokia phone that I, use, I think had Mego or something, and they used a match Matchbook, matchbox derivative, and I thought I'm, I made LXDE work on that, but then I would have to do very frustrating things like find an alt key and click, something equivalent yeah. to an alt key and right click yeah. to move the window so I could find the button to click. So obviously those things uh, would be tricky, but yeah. I think they would make LXDE portable to many small ARM boards that are coming out. Another one that I made it work on was uh, the Pocket Chip. Their uh, effort, they did a modified Debian install on that as well, and I got on the user forums and called myself Debian user <laughs> on the Pocket Chip forums. Yeah. And again, uh, Matchbox looked like it worked a little better because they did full screen. But uh, I don't know if I can help with these things in the future, but it would be nice. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Actually, it's a big headache for us because uh, we actually encourage people to try different window manager. But although uh, they all claim to support NetWM protocol, most of them work totally different. When you plug in a, another window manager, you will get uh, many problems here and there, but you, know, you don't know the root cause. It, 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 sh it should work. But most of the time, you, you just get some, uh, some problem here and there, but you don't know why. So, so I think that that's one of the reasons why the project keep doing their own window manager. But, but uh, I think uh, it's better to let the user choose whatever they, they want. Yeah, but not all of the combination work. <laughs> yeah, so, so. <laughs> yeah, agree, agree. <laughs> when you go to a, a new desktop and it I'm, right now, I have installed uh, Cinnamon because I felt that oh, it's a good effort. I should try yeah. it. Yeah. And I like it overall, but it's slow, and I have to click five, seven things just to do something I used to be able to do with one. You know. uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. If you have some uh, bug report that cannot be handled, uh, you can. <laughs> yeah, you, you're, um, yeah, it's actually better to use the bug tracker, but you, if you, yeah. <laughs> if you want, yes. <laughs> Uh, do we have more questions? We still have five minutes of time. Or we can just uh, take a look at... Uh, uh, and then s let's see demo or something. Actually, from the... Uh, sorry. Actually, uh, can you tell if this is a cute program or a program? That doesn't really matter. <laughs> yep. The, this is the, the file manager, and it just looks like uh, the original GTK version, and uh, quick, responsive, I close it, and, yep. Uh, oh, whoops, move to another screen. <laughs> yep, but, uh, okay. Uh, 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 it's kind of frustrating with my window. Oops, doesn't work. Never do live demo. <laughs> yeah, but uh, there's one thing I want to show. Uh, 
This is our uh, new uh, file archiver, and it's for uh, a, a graphical user interface for you to to handle uh, compressed files. And uh, does uh, uh, does anybody find that the, the UI look very uh, familiar? Uh, it is ported from GNOME file roller to Qt. Yeah, and it, it just used the same the same way as the the. The GTK version. Of course, we don't have client side declaration, but it's pretty similar. And uh, this is the file dialog. You can see that it's pr it's actually not the default file dialog provided by Qt. It's much more feature rich and uh, look pretty similar to the GTK file chooser. But it's implemented in Qt and backed by uh, our file manager. So we try to uh, do better integration and make sure everything is still uh, fast and responsive. Yep, and uh, yeah, the user, uh, the overall user experience uh, did not change that, that much by just changing your uh, UI toolkit. Yeah. So, so uh, if you uh, feel frustrated uh, uh, with the old LSD, maybe you can try the new one. <laughs> Uh, any more questions? Uh, if not, then let's thank speaker and we have coffee break. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>